this evening's program, we take a look around the Ministry of Petroleum and Mines, the portfolio of Over and Padmore, seen here with his Parliamentary Secretary, Patrick Manning. To tell us something of the functions of the Ministry, here is the Permanent Secretary, Mr. Orman Fernandes. <clears throat> the Ministry was formed through a decree by the Governor-General in the May of 1963. It actually came into being in the, on the 1st of June, 1963, and uh, it had a number of the people who had been previously employed in the Petroleum Department, which was part of the industry and commerce at that time. Very small nucleus of people. Well, maybe you could tell us something about the purposes and objecti objectives of this ministry. Yes, the main purpose is to ensure through regulation, supervision, encouragement where required that petroleum and other mining industries and related operations in Trinidad and Tobago are developed, operated and expanded to their maximum potential consistent with the optimum contribution to the nation. What sort of staff do you have to carry out these objectives? At present, the staff is about 80 strong, of which there are about 16 qualified people, consisting of engineers, uh, economists, lawyers, um, accountants, and uh, <coughs> geologists. Mr. Fernandes, you spoke of the qualified staff you have to carry out the functions, uh, the objectives of the ministry. Could you give us perhaps a, a brief rundown of the functions of each section? You can't do anything without consulting the legal officers in the ministry. Uh, a very extensive knowledge of all facets of the industry is required in this particular division. Then on the accounting side, we have a, a division here which assesses the companies for royalty payment and assists the Inland Revenue Department in determining what is the true income from their operations. And based on that income, in order to determine what is the taxable income of the, of the companies. There are quite a few areas, again, in which this department could assist and actually assist government in increasing their, their revenue from the industry. The economist is another section, which is a very important one. No, no program can, in fact, be carried out without some form of economic appraisal being attached to it. So we rely very heavily on the economists to provide us with all the, the trends in the industry, trends of prices, trends of production, whether they're going up or down, and multiples of these trends, which would allow us to get some fair indication of what revenue from the industry would be in a short term um, period, as well as the long term. The Chief Petroleum Engineer, Mr. Hugh Hines, is responsible for the engineering, the petroleum engineering and the geological sections of the ministry. Well, the technical division in the ministry is divided into two separate departments. We have the petroleum engineering department, which deals basically with problems in petroleum engineering, and we have the geological department, which has geological matters. The Petroleum Engineering Department is further subdivided into the Reservoir Section, which is located here in the Port of Spain offices, and the Development Section, which is in San Fernando. The Reservoir Section deals with problems pertaining to the reservoir, Petroleum Reservoir as a complete unit, and as such it deals with the determination of reserves, the development of the reservoir, calculation of all parameters involved with reservoir engineering matters. 
We also approve secondary recovery projects, which the company uh, applied to do every now and again. Then the development section deals with the more or less day-to-day -day activities of the oil company. Uh, they again are divided into two groups, the engineering functions and the inspection functions. The engineering function deals with the approval for drilling of wells and workover of wells which become uh, off production for some reason or another after some time. And next you have the approval for workover programs. We have the sort of looking into the engineering aspects of safety and also accident investigation. Then the inspection section some of the more important functions of the inspection side of the development section is the verifying of the quantity and quality of crude oil produced in the country. This is for the purpose of uh, evaluating for royalties and also for taxation purposes. Uh, another very important aspect is that they need to inspect the tank farm facilities both from the point of view of safety and also for inspecting any anti-pollution devices which the company would have built into the operation. We make recommendations on this matter and advise the company on the overall prospect of pollution. Uh, another thing again is we have to investigate all the pollution claims made by farmers, which have been quite recent, which have uh, been increasing recently with the range we've been having. The other section of the ministry deals with, as I said, the, ge the geological department. And they deal with two aspects, the petroleum geological side and also the non-petroleum matters. Uh, as far as the petroleum geology is concerned, they have to keep uh, in close liaison with the operating companies so that we receive data and up-to-date update our maps in connection with oil exploration. Uh, they also have to know exactly what areas are available for leasing so that any prospective companies will know exactly where they can apply to win oil for us. Uh, they also are engaged as liaison officers again in any seismic surveys which may be taking place in the country. Uh, as far as the non-petroleum aspect is concerned, uh, the department has to work along with the superintendent of Crown Lands in the leasing of areas for developing sand, gravel, and limestone quarries. Uh, we are particularly involved in quarrying operations uh, on Crown land. We have to insist on proper procedure so that uh, the land is left in a state which could be used for the development of agricultural purposes afterwards. <laughs>
Barite is a material used for weighing up the mud so that the wells can be kept under control while drilling. On Kronstadt, the barite is ground and packaged so that it can be transported to the rig. The Halliburton Service Company uses this terminal as a transshipment center for oil well cement used for cement casing in the wells. A problem which has within recent times become increasing concern is that of preventing pollution to the country's lands, watercourses, foreshore and sea. The Development Division is responsible for preventing, where possible, the occurrence of pollution by regular inspection of all anti-pollution devices. Full use is made of the Coast Guard facilities in this connection. The Ministry assists the Ministry of National Security and the Ministry of Labor in the investigating work permit applications and the development of nationals in the various technical fields. This is our current bailout system, as you see here. This is the backpack that we're going to be utilizing and the bottles. Now this bailout system goes conjunction with the Kirby Morgan band mask. If you'll notice right over here, it, it'll connect directly up to this non-return valve here. Now Gene, if you'll turn around please. Now, see the twin packs that you have here. These twin packs are, have enough life support left in them in order for you to get back up to the surface from roughly 200 foot of depth. Now you will have roughly five minutes of air remaining in these tanks when you do get up to the surface. You have a small valve here. As I turn on, you can hear the air. This is connected up directly to your Kirby mask. So at any time, you won't have no problems coming up. All you have to do is disconnect your hose and bail out, which is why this is called a bailout. It's standard pack. There's no difference between this and your regular scuba bottles that you utilize, except in the size. Are there any questions? Through the cooperation of the ministry, Faria Underwater Services, a company run by Malcolm Brown, set up this diving academy to train lo local personnel in the profession. The Interministerial Committee on Work Permits deals with applications from employers to employ non-nationals in specific positions for which there are no available or trained nationals and applications are granted on condition that suitable nationals are trained to take over the positions in a specified period of time. The ministry's representative on the committee advises on applications emanating from companies operating in the oil industry in order to ensure that suitable and qualified nationals are not overlooked. Be viewing in a fortnight's time when we present a second program on the functions of the ministry. This time we would highlight the geological section.